All right, guys, it's time for the episode I know you've all been waiting for. You guessed it, Butter Pig. Here it comes. All right, so what is a Butter Pig? All right, a um, year or two ago, uh, there was a contest on Thingiverse um, sponsored by uh, GE First Build and MakerBot, and uh, it was the uh, Icebox Challenge, and this was... Okay, so the challenge was to design something that you would use uh, in the refrigerator. Uh, so some of the other entries were, um, you know, things for stacking and organizing your eggs, or a, uh, an electronic scale that reminds you when you are low on milk, and things like that. Um, so I went a little bit more low tech with my, uh, my design, my invention, uh, and I ended up uh, coming up with the butter pig. Um, so the way that happened was, you know, I was, I was, do, I do the cooking in my, in our household and, uh, I would always, you know, we never really had like a butter dish or whatever. So, you know, I would slice off a, a, a little bit of butter and then just wrap it back up and put it back in the refrigerator every time. Um, and one day I was cooking and I was getting ready for Thanksgiving or something like that. And I was, I, the recipe called for a little bit of butter, so I got out a knife, sliced up, sliced the slice of butter off, threw the knife in the sink, put the butter back in the fridge, and then I got to another recipe and it called for a little bit of butter again. And so I got out another clean knife because the other one was already in the sink. You know, there, something's wrong with this picture. And so that was how I came up with the idea of a sort of a butter press, which would be, um, you know, the butter would be self-contained in this container so you don't have to worry about redoing the wrapper every time and you just throw the wrapper away and the container does all the work. You know, then I came up with the idea of having this sort of a guillotine on the end of it to slice off your next slice of butter so you don't have to get out a, a knife every time. Uh, and then from there the idea evolved a little bit more and, and to having well what if it, you don't just slice it off what if you can do other things what if you can extrude it you know shapes and things like that and uh, so what I ended up coming up with you know in the end was called the butter pig so here's one of the original butter pigs uh, like you may have seen on Thingiverse um, this guy has over 2,000 likes over 2,000 collects uh, it's probably one of the most popular Thingiverse designs I've seen that was not ever actually featured. So anyway, this was this was the first generation Butter Pig, is what I call Butter Pig Classic. Uh, so uh, I won third place in the Icebox Challenge, and this was actually featured at uh, CES, uh, the Consumer Electronics Show at the MakerBot booth. They had me and the other the two winners, or um, my design and the other two winning designs. Um, there at CES, and we, so we were right next to, there was a whole uh, Martha Stewart collection of like all these 3D printed uh, napkin rings and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, so that was really cool. Uh, so that first, um, that first Christmas, you know, I printed a bunch of butter pigs for my friends and stuff like that, and they started catching on, and everybody's like, you should sell these, etc. And, uh, which I'm still thinking about doing. Um, but anyway, by the second Christmas, um, it had gotten really big. I was printing, I basically had a, a uh, assembly line factory going in here where I was just printing pig after pig after pig. And uh, so I gave them out to some of my, uh, at some of the guys at work. And, and um, you know, one of the guys got really excited and he ended up getting his own 3D printer. And so he wanted to do something with the butter pig and so, uh, you know, on Thingiverse you can remix other designs and, and improve them and stuff like that. And so he remixed my butter pig design and made what he called the Baconlicious Mix, uh, the better butter pig. And it's got a couple of improvements. One is it has this uh, this corral, which this piece here you tape onto the side of your refrigerator so you don't have to use up any space in in the butter. Because like mine, I you know I put. I would just keep it in the door, you know, there's a little open and close a little butter section in the door of the fridge. This way you're not taking up any more space. Um, so you take that on the side and then this corral slides on there and this holds your three slicers um, and it has little, little places for the pig's feet. So 
so the butter pig sits on there and stays in place. Um, so anyway, with the Bacon Licious butter pig, uh, one of the things that he did was change the angles of the way um, this little slicer works and made the feet print as a separate part that snaps on um, and then redesigned the tail a little bit um, so it has a flat bottom on it. So all of these things add up to you can print it without a whole bunch of support material which makes it um, a lot faster and easier to print and you don't have to worry about all that time and effort cleaning off the support material. Um, so I used to I used to call it shucking the pigs, like shucking the corn or whatever, because I would get a, I would, a, 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 I would do a, I had it all lined up on a single plate print, so it would take about eight hours to print all of the parts at once with a butter pig, and then I would take it off the gold plate and sit there for another 20 minutes cleaning up all the little bits of support material and stuff like that. So with this, with the big and delicious pig, you don't have to worry about that. There's almost no support needed. Uh, and he also made it a little bit longer so it fits a full stick of butter. Whereas my original design, because of the limitations of the size of my printer, uh, you, had to, you had to basically slice off the first slice of butter before you put it in there or it wouldn't fit. Uh, so then uh, someone on Thingiverse made the comment, hey, this doesn't fit my stick of butter. And that's when I found out, you know, people had made comments about, oh, I, you know, I have a European butter and it's this and that. And I'm like, I'm not really... I can't please everybody, you know, but uh, but then I found out, some guy pointed out to me that I guess there's an East Coast butter and a West Coast butter here in the United States. So the sticks of butter I was using were East Coast butter sticks. Uh, in the West Coast, the butter sticks are actually fatter and shorter and stockier. And so that's even better because I can print a, a butter pig that will fit an entire stick of West Coast butter on my little printer uh, without any modifications. So what I did was I came up with this, uh, what I call the West Coast Butter Pig, uh, which is based on the bacon licious Butter Pig, but I made it smaller to fit a West Coast size stick of butter. Um, and this particular West Coast Butter Pig, I've actually printed in food grade PETG. So this, you know, you could really, uh, you know, you can really use it and wash it and reuse it and not have to worry as much about the food safety aspect of it. Uh, another issue with um, the original pigs, I was printing them all in ABS, um, which um, I eventually moved on to PLA for most of my prints because of ABS is just, there's so many things that can go wrong and I don't like the way it looks and yada yada yada. Um, so then I started printing my butter pigs in PLA. Well, the original ABS butter pigs you can put through the dishwasher on the top shelf and they'll be okay most of the time. PLA butter pigs, not so much. They get warped and melted. And so when I gave out a bunch of them for Christmas, a lot of people came back to me and said, Hey, I put my butter pig on the top shelf and it's still melted. And so, um, I was trying to warn people with the PLA ones that you probably just want to hand wash it. You know? All right, let's talk just a little bit about the parts of a butter pig. Uh, you've got the body, obviously, which holds the, the stick of butter. Uh, and then on the, on the newer butter pigs, you've got separate feet that snap on. On uh, the butter pig classic, that's part of the body. Um, you've then got the butt, which is what actually has a, uh, a threaded component to it, which allows the tail to work. Uh, the tail's got two pieces. Um, so this is, I call this the handle and the, the screw of the tail. Uh, and then on the end inside of here is what I call the plunger, which is a, it's a rectangular piece that fits the inside of the body, but it's able to rotate on the end of the tail. So as you're turning this, it's moving that plunger back and forth and that plunger rotates relative to this as that's turning so that it stays uh, in line with, with the body and pushes that stick of butter uh, out the end. Uh, so then you've got these pieces that go in here, which I call um, the slicers or the dies uh, that are, you know, you can swap out different ones to do different types of extrusions or just slicing off a, a slice of butter when you want it. Um, 
And so I think that's that's pretty much um, the, the main pieces that you need to know about. Uh, when you print your butter pig, the tail and the body are going to be two separate pieces, as well as the, um, or the, the tail, the butt, and the body are going to be separate pieces. And the first thing you're going to want to do is, is put the butt onto the body uh, and the feet if they're separate. Um, and these are designed to snap on and stay on. Uh, on the newer butter pigs, they're a little bit easier to get back off because of the way um, these tabs have an angled um, edge on them inside of there, whereas on the original classic butter pig, wherever he is, uh, the tabs were, um, you know, they had sort of a barbed end on, end on them where once they, once it was in place, it was basically impossible to remove without um, just breaking the thing. And that was because I didn't want the tail to pop off while you're applying pressure, you know, to the butter. So I wanted it to be on there really solid. Um, so it's a double-edged sword. Anyway, so without further ado, let's move on to the uh, demonstration section of the show uh, where I'm going to show you the proper way to um, use your butter pig at the dinner table. Okay, so this is a stick of ordinary uh, butter. And what I've done is I've left it out of the refrigerator for about two hours. So unscrew the tail all the way and The other way you can do it is you can actually put it in the pig cold so you don't have to get it all over your fingers uh, and then let the pig sit out to warm up. That's probably what I should have done. But anyway, um, don't try to put it in the microwave to soften it up. Uh, I've seen people try that and no, it, it, it's not a good idea. You just want to let it sit out, you know, and some people don't even refrigerate their butter anyway, so it's, it's totally safe. Just let it. Let it sit out and uh, let it get nice and soft. Okay, so the next thing is you take your slicer, put that in here, and tighten this down until you feel it hit the butter. Okay, now let's say you want to slice the butter. I'm going to lift that up, or just lift it out, turn. Let's say turn. Let's say we turn this. Uh, you know, there's like two tablespoons, I think. Yeah, judging by the lines on the tail. Slice that in there, and there's. Oop, and it's on my carpeting. Normally, you would want you would have your food in front of you, and you would be putting that onto your slice of bread or whatever. I just dropped it on the floor because I'm an idiot. Um, so then, what are these other what are these other slicers I've got here? Well, uh, this one here is the corn cob. So put that in there. Let's say you want to butter your ear of corn. Ooh, let's oh look at that! Look at how that comes out of there. I should really put something down. Look how that comes out of there, just nice and a nice thin piece to go on that corn. Oh, that looks delicious. Uh, here's another one I call the spread. Um, it has just kind of a little... What I was trying to make was sort of a bacon shape. Um, and so it comes out in this you know, shape that you is perfect, just perfect for spreading on uh, bread and toast and decorating with um, and you want that to just be that consistency where that just oozes out like play-doh it's not even you know not too hard but not so soft that it's melting and just look how it just comes out like that okay now everyone's favorite butter pig dye tip whatever you want to call it slicer is what we call the decorate um, and this is like something you'd see on the tip of a cake decorating uh, thing. I've got a slice of ordinary white bread on a plate. I'm going to put this right down here on my bread. You don't have to push down hard, just hold it, you know, uh, on the surface of your bread. Give it about 
one good turn. Oh, that didn't stick. Um, you know, just like cake decorating, it does take some practice to get good at it. I'm going to press this one down a little harder. Um, that's all gummed up. There's sort of a fine line between the butter being too warm and too soft uh, and too hard. Uh, I've got a lot of bright lights in here that are kind of melting the butter a little bit more than I want it to be. Uh, okay, I found some of these uh, flatbreads in the kitchen. They're a little bit firmer than this uh, than that bread was. So hopefully this is going to work. Okay, I've got a fresh piece of flatbread and a fresh stick of butter. Let's try to make this work this time. Press it on there. Give it a little bit of a press. Oh, I've got to tighten this down. Okay, press that on there. There we go. Now, now it's working how it's supposed to. Well, it was for a minute anyway. I got two good ones there. You can see the two flower shapes there. So if your butter is the right consistency, not too melted like mine is, uh, you should be able to pretty reliably make that shape with your butter. Uh, if you want to decorate your uh, dinner rolls and things like that. I, I did for Thanksgiving one year, you know, a bunch of rolls and I had these kind of hard, uh, crunchier rolls and I um, decorated them all with, with the decorative butter uh, and everybody liked that. So. Um, you know, the butter pig is great for uh, using in the kitchen. It keeps your butter fresh and keeps the air off of it and everything in the, in the fridge. It doesn't require, you know, wrapping and unwrapping. Um, and it's also great to pass around the dinner table and squeeze butter onto your corn or whatever you want. Um, so one last uh, tip that I wanted to demonstrate for you. I made just for fun, I call this the, the noodle. Uh, so you can make your own uh, butter noodles and um, this was inspired by people commenting that it was reminded them of like a play-doh toy and uh, I remember playing with play-doh when I was a kid and there was a thing like this and I just thought it would be fun I don't know what exactly you would use it for but I guess if you're buttering your uh, buttering your spaghetti or something uh, you, you, you can think of all kinds of I just wanted to give you that, leave you with that visual of that butter, that smooth, creamy butter coming out of there. Beautiful. I want to thank you for tuning in to the show today and uh, I encourage you if you enjoyed what you saw give me a subscribe give me a thumbs up uh, and don't forget to follow me on social media I don't forget to check out my other videos and uh, keep printing keep making and uh, keep rocking on